Hey guys, you asked me to show a high score run on Nine Beast. For those of you that didn't pull Chow, um, that is a hard request to honor. But I'm going to do my best in this video. So we're going to try to go for a high score run, but we can't turn on all, we can't turn on all the modifiers with the run I'm going to be doing. So an all modifier run without Chow, it very well may be possible. We've got 10 days left. A lot of people are working on it. Maybe it maybe it's doable. Um, I tried it a few times. My damage was short because I, I'm not bringing Chow, so I have to bring other options, and it, it really ate into my damage dealt. So we're going to be turning off both of the bulk mods. This is going to be a 215% clear. Now I will also mention it is exceptionally painful on my Mave to survive this because we're going for a long clear. Morale is hard without Chow, so we're having to go to turn 8 for our first burst, and we're going to kill on turn 10. So, Maeve is going to be absolutely decimated during this fight. If your tank is dying, turn off the attack and magic mod and do a 185% clear, which is still going to be a pretty high rank. This is a hard clash of wills, so even clearing 185%, um, without Chow is still going to get you, I would assume, in the top 500, maybe even top um, 300. I don't know. Who, who knows? But I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to turn on the Attack and Magic mod because my Maeve can tank it, but it is still very dangerous. So here's the party we're going to be using. Um, it is a powerful party. This is absolutely not budget by any means of the imagination. So we're swapping Chow for Maeve. And we're swapping Louise for Elena. Now, a Louise for Elena is a huge downgrade on damage dealt. We lost our gun in peril. We lost the fire field. Uh, yeah. So this is going to be a lot less damage. But we need Elena for morale and to help with survival. Because it's really hard without Chow. This is, this is a hard one without doing Chow. Okay, so here's the ambush. We're broken, all that. Um, Elena, in the shift form, is going to do... Blessing of the Azure to cure the breaks and give us break immunity, and then Legendary Heroine. Don't use Beloved, don't use Refragmentation on turn one. We're gonna we're gonna Blessing and Legendary. Sky is gonna shift and do our shifted LB. That's gonna accuracy down the boss. Laura Croft is gonna just punch the boss with a fire weapon. And I gave her quad attack, you know, four hits is better than three. So, um, but you need to hit the boss with, with an element, a proper element, every turn, either fire, water, or light. Uh, Maeve, start Maeve in the shift form, because when she shifts, she does auto cover, and auto cover, um, her auto cover is garbage. It, it replaces your good cover with really low mitigation. So we're going to start in the shift form, and we're just going to stay there the entire fight. We're going to do practice lore, natural wall, and hunting call for the morale fill. Um, Kresnik is going to Arcane Stimulant for the Morale Fill as well. And then Lang is going to Shift. We're going to do Blithe. We're going to do um, Purifying for the uh, Morale Fill. And we're going to do um, Disarming to break the boss. We started in the Shift form so that we would... Um, actually, it's not super important. doesn't really matter. Yeah, whatever. Start, start whatever form you want with, with Lang. Okay, anyway... So the boss has human killer. The human killer the human killer ramps up as the fight goes on and gets stronger. It's not super bad on turn one, but as the fight goes on, his human killer gets more and more powerful. And Mystic Wave really hurts. Thankfully, if you can you know duke it out until turn I think five, it goes away. At that point, your Mave will be fine. But these first five turns are gonna be so incredibly brutal on a human tank. Because the boss gets human killer and it keeps increasing every turn. It gets more and more dangerous. But thankfully our morale is slowly being pushed. Now notice how our morale is pretty bad compared to the Chow Clear. To be expected. The boss's morale is very front loaded in this encounter. So for the first four turns he gains enormous amounts of morale. After turn five the boss's morale generation like poops out. He stops gaining all this huge morale, and it becomes a lot easier to push morale with, with, without, uh, without Chow. That's why we're going to go for a turn 8 burst, but that, that adds a whole, a whole other layer of problems we're going to get into in a moment. So on turn 2, we're now imperiled with the damage over time. We're going to use Elena 
to Refragmentation to Cure the Imperil and Legendary Heroin again. Do not do Beloved Heroin just yet. Uh, we're going to go back to the base form with Sky. And we're going to, she's using a fire weapon, by the way. So we're going to Magnus and then just hit the boss twice. Doesn't really matter with what. That's going to seal the boss again. Uh, Laura is going to do Exercise Jade. Now, if you don't have the Jade Moon Pendant, you can um, do, do Status Immunity with either Maeve, Kresnik, or Ling. They all have Status Immunity buffs in their kit, and you want to do it every single turn. So watch the morale bar as I do this Jade Moon Pendant. So I'm going to click it in three, two, one. You saw, how, you saw how, much, how much that morale bar moved from Jade Moon Pendant? You want to do that every single turn. It, um, any kind of AoE status immunity is a tremendous morale gain, and you want it on every single turn. So Jade Moon is a good way to do it, but not the only way. It's just efficient. I could have buffed it with like Maeve or something this turn. This turn, Maeve is going to do You're a Natural. We're going to do Hunting Call, and we're going to do Fill Rate. Now, if your Maeve doesn't have You're a Natural unlocked yet because your morale isn't high enough, you could just hit the boss or do whatever and do it next turn instead. But you're a natural is a beast mitigation, which helps the rest of the party. Um, Ling is going to in the base form. Um, now, so for Ling, well here, Kresnik is going to imbue the boss with light element because turn two has accuracy. So you know that that's pretty standard. Okay, so look at your Mave. My Mave is using Snowbear Guard. Snow Bear Guard, and in the in the first fight, in the first turn, the boss did a lot of Mystic Waves. So my Maeve is not topped off. On my turn chart, it says Ling is going to do Morale Fill and Double Moving, because Moving fills Morale too. But if your Maeve needs healing and Kresnik was busy that turn, Ling has to step in. So Ling is going to instead, we're going to Blithe. We're going to just move in once, and we're going to do a refreshing twirl, which is going to give 8,000 healing to Maeve. And I think, I think that should be enough to keep her alive. So that's going to heal Maeve up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now the boss's um, human killer has increased yet again. Um, Mystic Wave can do even more damage. So if the boss goes crazy with Mystic Waves and does like a ton of them, your fight's going to be just over. There's two Mystic Waves. Like four of them are okay. Five or above might kill your Maeve. If you only did two Mystic Waves, we're good. So this is giving you like Cerulean, Cerulean flash, flashbacks from Arbor Alice. Yeah, we got to just hope the boss doesn't go crazy casting Mystic Wave on these first few turns. Later in the fight, it won't really matter. Okay, so on this turn, Kresnik is going to Arcane Antioxidant. That's for the resist buff. We're going to need that for later in the fight. Um, Laura is going to just Jade Moon again. Um, we're going to use Elena. Now Elena is going to double cast. We're going to Legendary and Beloved Heroine to keep filling that morale gauge. Sky is just going to hit the boss three times. Um, don't waste a second charge for Magnus. Uh, Ling is going to shift this turn. Okay, again, check your Mave. Mave is full health, so we don't need um, refreshing. So we're going to Blithe. We're going to... Um, and we're just going to Moving Dance twice. The Moving Dance... Um, gives a tiny amount of morale every time you cast it, so that helps out. We didn't need healing on Maeve. Maeve on this turn is going to... Um, we're going to refresh the killer buff. We're going to do morale fill, and we're going to do wild barrier. Because now the boss is starting to get really painful, and this barrier is going to help Maeve survive. So, and 11,000 point barrier. So again, hopefully the boss doesn't go nuts with Mystic Wave. Um, this is the second to last turn where the boss is going to have huge human killer. It's not the highest, though. The highest is going to be coming in a moment. One Mystic Wave is fine. Two Mystic Waves is not a problem. Three Mystic Waves. Thankfully, thankfully the morale is going very nicely on our side, so that's pretty good as well. Okay. Turn four. Turn four is going to be the last turn of the boss's human killer. This is also when it's going to be the highest in the entire fight. So, um, let's see. We're going to actually, let me change something real quick in my turn, my chart. Yeah, I wanted to change that real quick. Okay, um, anyway. Whoops. Okay, um, turn four. Yeah, I'm, try I'm trying to optimize for you guys. Okay, so we're going to turn four. We're going to Jade Moon with Laura. Uh, Elena is going to just double fill morale again. Okay, there's no accuracy on turn four, so we're going to shift Sky and get another stack of the shifted LB. 
We're gonna also use Maeve to do her LB for a huge barrier to hopefully help her survive and help the party survive. Also, because Sky um, is shifted this turn and has a damage over time, she's gonna take a little bit of damage, but the barrier is gonna make it nice and fine. Um, we're going to use Kresnik on this turn to do his um, LB on this turn, I think. Yeah, we don't really need healing. So we're going to do Kresnik's LB on this turn. So let me actually change my chart a little bit. There we go. All right, Ling on turn four is going to go to the base form. We're going to Morale Fill. We're going to Enthrall to break the boss, and we're going to Moving Dance. So, we need to hope that the boss does not go bonkers on Mystic Wave. This is going to be the last big dangerous turn for, for the tank. There's one. We have a huge barrier, though. We have a 20,000 point barrier, so it should be fine. We're looking really good. This Mystic Blast is fine. Oh, wow. This is... Unfortunately, this makes it look really easy. I promise you, sometimes the boss does multiple copies or multiple casts of... Mystic Wave, and it's crazy painful. Um, thankfully, he didn't do that. Okay, notice how the boss's morale was pushed enormously to the right. That's the last time that's going to happen. For the remainder of the fight, the boss will not be gaining this ri uh, ridiculous amount of um, morale gain. From now on, the boss's morale gain is very tiny. So we can now start pushing the morale all the way for our burst on turn 8. Yeah, notice on turn five, this is where like the, the Chow the Chow teams kill, because Chow just, you know, destroys the morale bar. Um, we don't have Chow. Anyway, thankfully the boss's human killer buff is now gone. Um, it's wearing off, it's gonna be gone on his turn. He's not gonna refresh it anymore in this fight. So Maeve is out of the woods. On the other hand, now because we're not pushing the boss on turn five, we have to deal with his physical damage. He has accuracy on turns 5 and turn 6. To deal with that, we're going to shift Ling and use Ling's shifted LB for an AoE 5-stack Mirage. Um, I'll explain more about the Mirage stuff in a second. Back to the base form with Sky. We're going to Magnus and then hit the boss twice. Elena is going to Morale Fill, and we're going to do Protection of the Azure on herself. Laura is going to just Jade Moon. Kresnik, um, we're imperiled this turn. We got to cure that. So Kresnik is going to antioxidant to cure the imperils, supplement, and potion. If your Mave is really, really hurt this turn, assuming the boss you know went crazy on Mystic Waves, you would cast more more potions instead of supplement for Mave. But we don't need we don't need that. All right, Mave on this turn, turn five is going to refresh, um, uh, cover, provoke. And we're going to do Hunting Call for Morale Fill. Okay. So we need the boss, so, so the physical. Razor Claw is the AoE physical. We need five or less Razor Claws. There's one. We miraged it. There's two. Razor Claw. Okay. We're, we're three. We got two stacks of Mirage remaining. Okay, that was fine. So this clear is going pretty well. He did, a, he did a lot of Mystic Waves, but thankfully the killer buff is gone, so that wasn't really a problem. Um, if the boss does five or less Razor Claws, you're fine. If the boss does six or more Razor Claws, um, the run's probably over, because we only had a, a five-stack Mirage. Okay, so for this turn, um, turn six, we're going to... We're going to once again use the... Actually, we don't really need the LB... On Maeve, I don't think. I think we're fine. Well, mm, I'd kind of rather fill morale with Maeve. Hmm. Let me. Let me. Hold on one second. All right, we're gonna go ahead and limit this turn for the for the safety. We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna do it for the safety. So that that's a big barrier. All right, Sky, it's turn six. What is turn six? Turn six, we're going to hit the boss three times. Elena is going to fill morale and do, um, let's just triple cast. Let's mitigate, fill morale, and, legend, and legendary. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me explain it better. <laughs> we're going to Radiant Shield, we're going to Blessing of the Azure, and we're going to Legendary Guardian. 
All right, Laura Croft is going to exercise Jade. Uh, Kresnik, we'll come back to him in a minute. Uh, Leng on turn six, we have the base form. We're going to morale fill, disarming to break the boss, and we're going to celestial dance. That's going to be a um, a four stack mirage for the AOE physical coming in this turn. So this turn's a little bit more risky because we need the boss to do four or less razor claws. Uh, Kresnik can just supplement potion and antioxidant. And again, if you're if you're Actually, won't even antioxidant. We're gonna supplement and double potion. Okay, so once again, um, we need to hope the boss does four or less razor claws, because this turn he also has accuracy yet again. So hoping for the best here. So let, let, let's 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 see. One razor claw, two razor claw. Uh oh, did two of them early. Okay, razor claw. No, we're good. We're good. I think. I think we're good. I only did three. Uh oh. Okay, three Razor Claws. Yeah, we still had one stack of Mirage remaining for safety. So that was that was handled. Not a problem. So now, turn seven, the boss doesn't have accuracy, so we're good. All right, wait for all this to finish. Okay, we're going to go ahead and just use the morale buff, or the, the attack buff with the boss. Um, we're going to use Tyvis' STMR with Sky, because we're going to be bursting next turn. Elena is going to go to the base form. She's evading in the base form, and the boss has accuracy down still from Sky on an earlier turn, um, or should. Yeah, there it is. Reduces accuracy. So Elena only has 50 evasion, but the boss has accuracy down, so it's fine. Um, so we're going to go ahead and in the base form, we're going to piercing prism for the sword in peril. We're going to battle insight to get credit for breaking the boss, and we'll just wave the aurora. So let, let, go ahead and let this finish. It's gonna it's gonna Libra the boss. I don't really care. You know whatever. Okay, Laura Croft is just going to as usual Jade Moon Pendant for that nice morale fill. Um, Maeve on this turn is going to do the Killer Buff. We're going to morale fill and we're going to do Limitless Ferocity. Kresnik is going to um, do Supplement and Double Potion. And Ling is going to go to the ship form. We're going to morale fill. We're going to we're going to combo step so the next turn we can have chain frames, and we're going to imbue the party with fire using Blaze of the Phoenix. So we're going to burst on turn eight. So like I said, the boss's morale gain really slows down after turn four. So we've gone the 200% morale for turn eight burst without Chow. Tricky to do. But it's fine. Also, the boss's you know killer buffs are gone. The mitigation buffs are gone. Mystic Wave isn't really dealing that much damage anymore because we've got huge morale bar. I mean, it still freaking hurts. Oof. Yeah, like like I mentioned, if your tank is not as thick as mine is, turn off that attack and magic modifier. But if you've got a crazy powerful Mave, you can do this. All right. Now we're gonna do the burst turn. Now notice how the whole party has a imperil this turn and a damage over time. You could, like, Guts for it, but I want to use my Guts later in the fight. We are we are going to rely on Guts, but later in the fight. So for this turn, Kresnik is just going to cure that. So he's going to Antioxidant, then we'll Remedy for Morale, and we'll just Potion to top people off. So go ahead and do that. That cures the Imperil on our Burst turn. Uh, we're going to Defense and Spirit buff, and we're going to Attack and Magic buff. Okay, now Ling is going to go shift to the base form. The reason we're shifting is that's going to turn on our triple cast for next turn. And now she's going to triple Stardust Ray from the frames she gave last turn. Uh, Maeve is going to also triple Stardust Ray to help us out. Um, Elena is going to triple. We're going to uh, Blade of Salvation. Don't use Piercing Prism. We need that to finish off the fight later. Sky is going to shift and do her shifted LB. And then Laura is gonna shift and do volatile ammunition. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and chain this up and this should be a 100 point chain and it should hopefully um, damage cap, but we don't have the defensive spirit mods on. So go ahead and do this. Okay, three, bi three, 3 billion. 
Um, nice. Uh, unfortunately, we actually did guts and uh, oops, big oof. I didn't really want to guts there, but I guess we did. Oh well, it should be fine. Um, okay, so damn it, Sky, why did you guts? Oh my god, I think Laura did too. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna have to adjust the plan in case that happens. Oh, jeez, really? Really? You guts on that turn? We cured your imperil. Okay. Um. Okay, so give me a second. I've got to think of how you f fix that. Oh my god. Uh. Kresnik was gonna fill, but he's got to do re-raise now. I think. We're still imbued. So we can... Sh We're still killer buffed, too. So we can shift here with Ling. We can Dragon Dancer. Passionate. And Enthrall. You gotta break the boss as well. Alright, let, 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 let me change this. Okay, Enthrall plus Magnus plus Passionate on that turn. And Kresnik is going to Potion, Antioxidant, and AoE Re-Raise. Alright, Potion plus Antioxidant plus AoE Re-Raise. Okay, um, Maeve is going to Killer, Morale Fill, and Wild Barrier. Let's go ahead and attack a Magic Buff. And we're going to reload. Reload everyone. So, Laura... Um, oh, 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 before we do that, before we do that, Elena is going to Sword in Peril as the first cast and Double Salvation. Laura is going to Volatile, and Sky is going to LB. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and cap a second time. This might finish off the boss, potentially, um, because we don't have the defensive spirit mods turned on. So this might even be the end of the boss right here. In fact, that almost certainly will be. Um, let's go ahead and do this. But the plan was to go to turn 10 if we had defensive spirit mods on. We actually might not finish them off. Oh, my God. Oh, we did. Okay, we did. So, okay, so the, the plan was, if that didn't finish off the boss, one of two things would have happened. Either Sky and them would have survived from the mitigation, so they would have just gone again. We refill, or they would have died. If they had died, um, perfect score, etc. There we go. Um, one, one million and one thousand score points. Here is the damage breakdown. Obviously, Laura and Sky are the big ones. Um, yeah. Oh, my God. This frustrates me. That that Sky gutsed on that threshold. On, in my testing run, she never gutsed on that threshold. Why did she guts that threshold that time? Oof. Anyway, okay. So, if... Okay, so on that threshold, let me explain, explain how to go to turn 10, because I, I wasn't able to demonstrate it. Um... On the threshold, you did your thing. So we adjusted we adjusted our turn chart right there. Uh, on turn, if the boss had not died, on turn 10, um, during that turn, your Sky and your Laura might have potentially died from the damage over time, but the re-raise would have brought them right back. And that would have been on your turn, and they'd be evading in the base form, and the boss has no accuracy on turn 10, on turn 9, because we pushed the threshold that turn. So... They might have re-raised and come back. If that had happened, on turn 10, what you're going to do, Kresnik is going to normal attack times 4 to A, we fill 40 LB. Ling is going to, in the shift form, let me write this on my chart, you would imbue the party, plus Magnus to fill the rest of the way, plus um, anything, morale, who cares. Um, and then Maeve would have killer, plus morale, plus hit. There we go. So Maeve, 
if they had died and re-raised, Maeve would have done Killer, Ling would have done the Imbue, and then Kresnik and Ling would have refilled the LB gauge of Laura and Sky. You shipped Laura and Sky back to the shift form. You chain again. My Elena was geared for bulk. She wouldn't. She would. She, she's never going to die on turn nine. So that's how you do it. There is an all or a perfect score with um with these modifiers without Chow. Now I did three billion damage. I probably could have turned on the thirty percent defense and spirit mod and still damage capped. So this probably could have been a 245% clear. Maybe. Um, almost certain this team cannot do a, f a, f a perfect score rank 1 without Chow. It's just, I don't think it's going to work. I, th I think the damage is just not there. Um, I do think a 245% with a good variance roll is very possible. Um, so that was, that, that was the clear we did. Now I'll show you the gear and explain what, what, what was going on. So um, here's the party. So... Uh, base form, Maeve never used it. Start in the shift form. She wants to have a little bit of thunder and dark resist. The only resist that matter are thunder and dark. You never need any fire or earth resist doing it this way. Um, we're using a 60% buff from um, Kresnik. I know Elena does a 100% on turn 2, but later in the fight we've only got a 60% from Kresnik. So 80 plus 60 is close to one is 140. Um, with a negative 50 mod, that's good, and we always cure the imperils. Uh, Maeve is wearing full evasion because um, I think that's actually not required. I think I always have accuracy down on the boss, don't I? Let me look real quick. Accuracy down, accuracy down. We actually always have accuracy down at all times. You only need a gear for 50 evasion, so I actually wasted two gears or one gear slot. It's not that big a deal. Anyway, here's the, here's the build. Uh, Snow Bear is enormously helpful because for the first three turns, uh, Kresnik is very busy setting up his autocast stuff and cannot heal. And you need someone to heal the boss or heal, heal your tank. So Snow Bear, along with Ling as some top off every now and then, is really good for keeping your tank alive. If you don't have Snow Bear, Mechanical Heart would work. If you don't have either, then uh, Phoenix Synergy and hoping for not many Mystic Waves. Here's the build we used, and then I used uh, Melia's card, because it gives a lot of HP. Um, Kresnik in the base form. I gave him Blizzard Orb, so he could counterattack um, with, with AoE LB fill. It really helps to get Maeve her um, LB more often, because we, we, we did Maeve LB on turn 4 and turn 6, and it's helpful. Uh, full Evasion, and the whole party wants a little bit of light, dark, and lightning resist because we need to um, we need to immune the boss's attacks. Yeah, so there we go. And then here's here's build quad attack is really important. I gave him counter up. Um, I've seen a lot of people saying, "What if I don't have like looming wrath and all?" If you don't have things like looming wrath, if you don't have this, um, it, it's it's not not a big deal. You just counter less often. Like it's it, it's 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 not really gonna like break your run or anything. Um, evasion card, shift form geared, literally identical. So there's Kresnik. Uh White Dragon Ling. Um, you know some auto auto morale stuff. Conductor's baton. Uh, that's it, pretty much. Conductor's baton. Uh, shift form geared, identical. Full evasion and um, some resistances. There you go. So you want you know uh, light light lightning, dark and light resist um, for the party. Uh, Laura in the base form, Jade Moon, Fire Weapon. Well, Fire, Water, or Light Weapon, any any of them. Um, I gave her Quad Attack for turn one. It's the only time she really used it. Uh, her TMR, etc. Shift form, geared for damage. Uh, because we're not using Louise, we're going with a Sword in Peril. Swords are better than Spears. Um, because they uh, swords have 1.5 variant versions. This is a low attack power sword, but it is two-handed, and it does give 1.5 variants. So this is actually better than like your STMR swords, as goofy as it is, um, the red sword. Uh, so here's the build we're using with her. Um, she did the most damage on the party. Uh, 300 beast, 275 fairy, and yeah, there we go. Uh, Elena in the base form. It, I mean, she did like 300,000 damage. Her damage is trash, but she helped. Uh, she did. She had. Here's the here's the base form build. Uh, notice it is 50% evasion. I gave her Fallen Moon, which caps out her, which which brings her evasion above 50. Um, so yeah, 50 evasion, 
and that plus accuracy down makes her nice and safe when she shifts on the DPS turns. Uh, and as far as killers go, she had 150 Beast and 250 Reaper. So yeah, shift form is just full evasion, a lot of um, auto casting for morale fill. Uh, yeah, she fills morale and does uh, break immunity. Um, break immunity, she, she does the refraction on turn two to get rid of that imperil, resist buff, etc. And then Sky, base form, fire, water, or light weapon. You need one of those. Any, any of them is fine. Other than that, um, Tyvus' Spirit, really, really big damage gain. If you don't have it, you'll just do less damage. You won't really change the strategy any. Uh, shift form, uh, again, a 1.5 variance two-handed sword. Uh, it's really good. If you're using, like, you know, Louise or something, you obviously want to use a gun, but we're not using Louise. Uh, and Guts. Give her Guts in the shift form, because the damage over time is going to deal a ton of damage to Sky. Um, and and th that actually was very, very important to survive that, uh, that threshold attack. And there's the build. There's the killers. And she's maxed on everything. Maxed LB, maxed Beast, and maxed Fairy. Okay. Hopefully that was helpful. See you guys next time.